So the idea of this talk is to introduce like smart records and the like, composable routing framework that we were working on a few months ago, just in case it gives you like ideas or a framework on how to work on the retrieval client, or at least like, I don't know. I, we don't need to implement like this all the way, but maybe it gives you some illustration on how to approach the problem. So basically, and where I view, the composable routing is composed by two different frameworks or two different pieces, which is the smart records, which is the persistence and the data, the our metadata that is stored in the indexer, for instance, that then clients will um, be able to process and understand to run the, the routing logic. So the routing behavior. The idea, like, if we put the indexer um, example, smart records will be stored in the indexer. So the one with the retrieval client fetches this, this or CID, this um, actually wouldn't be like that because actually you would send a full expression to the indexer and the indexer will return the metadata. And according to that metadata, your universal then will perform additional requests or orchestrate or everything that you need in order to find the, the content you're looking for. And in the routing behavior, I'm not going to go in depth there, but like we have links, we have context, and we have the routing logic. So according to the data that we're receiving and the links that we're receiving from the, from the um, systems, the context of my nodes. So if I'm in a private network, if I'm in a, in a, I don't know, like I have in a specific location or so on, we can trigger different routing uh, logics. And these routing logic in the end are just expressions that are populated until they are fulfilled. So instead of like an HTTP request where you just send a request and get the answer back, you will be able to send a routing expression, which the other side will be able to populate all that it knows so that you get it back. If you have all that you need in order to fetch the content, that's great. If this is not the case, you can send it back to another system like the index are just doing part of it. Then you send it to a, a, the DHC node, a DHC node populates what it's missing and so on until you get all of the knowledge you need to perform the actual content routing. And smart records are essentially like the data part and it's the part that is currently implemented. And the reasoning behind um, smart records was the following. Um, we didn't have our standard way of sharing the same information between all, all protocols. So the DHC has its own uh, format and stores some information. Then in the index, we are storing metadata, pipeline, tox vouchers. So there were a lot of, of pieces of information that were not standard. We didn't have a way so that all routing systems took the same language. Um, so the idea is to build this blackboard of protocols so that our protocols will have a, uh, a common language and a common persistence layer to share and to be able to orchestrate all of these back and forth of information. So smart records in the end is just a generalized DHC key value store where uh, we can put information, get information, and every peer gets a private storage for its own. So everyone will be able to get all of the data that is stored in that in a specific key of the smart record. But there is no, so you only can have conflicts with yourself. And this is really interesting because then according to what peers have in uh, store web data, you can trust it more or less. And also we introduced what we call smart tags, which is uh, whenever we store data or we modify data in some peer that is storing a smart record, we can trigger some operations to mutate that data. So for instance, one thing that, well, that we tried is that if we, um, store in a peer a uh, smart record with um, mm, with a reachability um, tag and a, and a multi address. The peer will once this uh, this smart record is stored locally, it will check if it has reachability so that uh, you have additional information of if this peer is able to reach that guy or not. And when you fetch back this metadata, it's really interesting because you have additional information that you don't have right now. And this is how Pixar like to refer to the um, to the to smart records is like DHT values that become publicly updatable JSON documents. So like instead of providing records and peer records, it's, you can store arbitrary data, and we can add additional logic. And um, I was going to say something else about smart records, but. Uh, so what kind of use cases we were thinking initially with smart records, um, like ways of upgrading the network without having uh, to make 
a lot of changes or a lot of protocol um, upgrades. A good ex I like an example that guitar could. I haven't been maintaining like the EHC method, so I don't know. But like apparently, updating the the format in which we are storing provider records and key records, it's kind of a nightmare. And with this, as we can store arbitrary data, we, we would have a way of like making updates without having to to change the other thing in the left protocol. Um, other things that we could do is like have Bitswap speak the same language as the DHT. So we could have Bitswap fetch provider records from the DHT. So, so not, not fetch provider records from the DHT, but have a, a common storage between Bitswap and the DHT. So that if I make a DHT lookup, we will get the same record as if Bitswap did a one message. And in this way, we will have several, several protocols by speaking the same <laughs> control <laughs> method. Um, and then like we started thinking about more complex use cases, like for instance, using this Common layer as a orchestrator for a trust uh, for exchange. And we could use like a mailbox because we store encrypted data and we could trigger data like logic on the persistence once you put that data. Um, and we have a few examples on this. And, and of course, for our indexing matters, it would be great because even the data could be encoded with smart records so that we have a standard way of referring to. And in the end, like smart records under the hood use IPLD. So it's a data system which compiles to IPLD. It's not an idea, which now that I'm starting to learn about these things could have made sense because one of the reasons we didn't use um, um, IPLD is because maps and IPLD, the key always has to be a string. And we wanted the keys to be any type of our data model. So you could have like Boolean as a, as a key. Yes. The reason I don't. Can you not serialize this? Sorry? Can you not, can you not serialize this? Probably, but I guess the question is like, what, what was the flexibility there? But you don't have a kind of map that has a key to get a string. You would have to, to make like some. Um, how, are you, right? how are you doing it currently? Because you said it does serialize to the IPLD. Yes, so we compile it to, to IPLD. So I can show you the code. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's cheating. It's cheating. No, no, no. I, well, I mean, if you, when you say compile, I, it's, I mean, it's not compiling. It's just like I, we add an additional serialization on this version. So we have, we use. Um, we, I only ask because it sounds like when you say that, we, we add mm -hmm. an additional compiling to the serial. That sounds like an ideal to me, right? It is an ideal. Yeah, yeah. And initially yeah. it was, but, but I think that we didn't have the knowledge to. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. So. Also, ADLs and I are very like pretty abstract right now. So we have a schema, mm -hmm. and according to if it's from IPLD and to IPLD, every node, like every uh, kind of our data model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Cheating. <laughs> ah. So, yeah. Because actually, yeah, there's another thing. Um, all of this is not only for smart record, but also for the compulsory routing language. So we have predicates because we have functions and, and we have expressions and links and so on. Can you, can so you explain what is the difference? Because I only understood now that these are two different things smart record versus the compulsory routing language. Yes. Is the compulsory routing language just a query for a smart record, or is it? Co compulsory, so smart records use the compulsory routing language. Initially, the we had only smart records, yes. but then like the talk started thinking we need to be to go further and like more ambitious and smart records only because of all of our clients because we need like the other side, like the client side, right. in order to search. Mm -hmm. So he came up with a syntax for a, a routing language right. that is a superset. In the end, it's just a smart record language that we had with a predicate, which is used to use yeah. expressions and, and wrong functions. And that's what you use like your query in the system. Yes. yes, and we can, I mean, I have an example for instance, uh, we can jump right into that. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, we, we have different kinds, like a link, uh, interfaces, which the interface is always the same. I receive an expression, I may give you a bag an expression populating all that I know. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about subnets, because according to the net, that, that's the context. So mm -hmm. I may be part of, this is related to what Adin was thinking of having a federation of supernodes or, or like Kinyatas mm -hmm. and, and gateways that talk to each other to 
uh, accelerate content routing, we would be a subnet, but we could be part of several subnets. So, mm -hmm. um, and the DHT could be a subnet. We could have several DH different DHTs that have a different like protocol, and but they could leverage the same routing mm -hmm. language. And um, and like the interface for composable routing is really simple because you send an expression, you get back the expression populated, and according to what knowledge you have, you decide to go right away and request the content or keep populating until you have enough information. And the ones that start, so every peer would have their middle words, which are the policies that we were mentioning yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you could con configure the, the different um, middle words that you want in your notes so that when you receive an expression, you start populating with the following this graph. So uh, first is batching, which is if I'm receiving requests for, for certain content, uh, that is a list of CIDs. In this one, we would do it back and forth. Um, we may like populate all of, all of the CIDs if we know them already and the providers that have them. Then we have caching. If I've seen this CID already, I can like send the expression back without having to do additional um, processing. Then we could have a prefetch, which is this radar that uh, Adin has introduced in Metifest. The idea is to have different middle words and that you could choose the um, when you said so I have my peer, I say that I'm going to serve uh, and like answer to routing expressions using batching, then caching, then prefetch, and then either like a radar or a DHT uh, lookup. This is a demo of a person responding to a routing request. Receiving, uh, yeah, responding. Yeah, so I'm receiving the expression yeah. and I will start populating the, the expression following until it's full. Imagine that, for instance, the cache has, you, uh, someone has asked you for a certain CID and you ask me now. So I have it in cache, I can return directly the routing expression with all of the information for you to fetch the data. Or this could this be- would, Sorry, just, just yeah. so this would be like an index set of the peer on this? Or? Every peer. So Everyone the idea has. is, yeah, for instance, an indexer will only have maybe uh, batching, caching, and then the indexer core, but an IKFS node could have batching, caching, uh, prefetching, and then the radar and the DHC. And the DHC would like, itself send a request to another peer in the DHC that could have like this uh, their own like policies or their own logic. So all of us have these logics to answer to routing expressions. And um, can I can I try seeing if I'm this if I were to say it and see if I'm saying the same thing? Yes. Um, just make sure I understand this. Which is I think Essentially, what you're saying is you've got some arbitrary data structure. So we can think of it as an IPLD back mm -hmm. with a set of nodes or a JSON mm -hmm. wall and or this one that you guys have. But when we think of it as that, and then each node has some set of these nodes that might be found in there that they know things they can do in the process. So it's like, oh, when I see a node that's of this schema type that happens to be in here, I know. Oh, I resolve. I can do this operation of like attempting to resolve from, you know, find with the property SID to the provider of that, and that's like an operation. Yeah. Right. And so they all have some different sets of operations to do over that yep. data set. But when they don't know what to do with the node in there, they just ignore it. Yes. Right. Um, and yes. so then, as you add new functionality, you sort of piecemeal and like new things just sort of flow through and Yeah. Yep. So. so no, yes, but no, yeah. So you so you, when you build your like go I can trust node, you have this whole system so that when someone started like a bit swap session, they would send a routing request into this and it would have its whole own logic which would call out the DHT nodes right. and bit swap nodes and yeah. put out respond and then you would get a stream of yes. results. Yes. So and the idea was to like uh, decouple the actual content routing from the transport layer. So yeah. I can send you this request to a, oh, I could announce it to a gossip subtopic, or I could send you a bit spot request, That's or an HTTP request. Yeah, no, yeah, whatever. Totally makes sense. So that was the idea. And like this is an example of what we'll mention. So imagine that we want to provide some content. Mm -hmm. I do like route, which is the like the, <laughs> the expression. And I want to provide this CID into this binder. And I send this data to an indexer. So that the indexer stores this metadata. There's nothing to do for the indexer. It can like fulfill the full um, request. So it just sends an okay. And then some ritual miner wants to get data from uh, like 
from the network, it will send a simple find CID to the indexer. The indexer will answer back because it has this information that he populated. It will answer back with fetch CID minor, but like, I don't know what is the, the multi address of the minor. So with this data, it hasn't been fully fulfilled. So I just forward uh, the data that I don't have, which in the end is I want to find this CID um, in the DHT so that I get the few record. And when you get to the DHT, you may have not found, and this means that it's not fully fulfilled. So you could keep going and answer others, or you could like get an okay with the multi address of the uh, or fetch multi address so that you go directly to multi address or something like that. So the idea is yeah. that you keep going with all of these middlewares. So middlewares, ideally, ideally there are reference implementations that you could like plug in your in your node and that's it. And you would be populating the, the expressions until you you manage either to time out or because you haven't found the content likes in this way, or it gives you all the information that you need to fetch the content from the specific field. How do you know if you have the complete results? I mean, and then so let's say the minor there from the index which returned, you know, fetch QX one to three and minor with the actual multi adder. You're like yeah. done for the index, yeah. but like there might be other people somewhere in the network who are storing it and you can only find out the DHT or something. Like yes. And, so and, and that would mean like if this guy, for instance, doesn't know uh, anything about that, it would like give me the expression back as is, mm -hmm. which means I need to find somewhere else. Then, and Ooh, just, what I'm saying is, I like, think that like, your complex, your mapping of complex routing and policy thing still yes. plays a role. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, 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 and so I'm from some, and I'm gonna now do these lower priorities. Yes. And this is the receiving part, but we would have the the analogous in the in the sending part. So I will start maybe checking locally if I have it um, or the cache. Then the next thing I would do is first yeah. ask the DHT, then go to the indexer and then to a pub sub. So, yeah, so yeah, the same yeah. way that you're receiving and you go back, yeah. uh, you also when you send a request, you first go through all of these middleware in your yeah. local because you may have it in the cache. The same way that we that grab some books in the data store. Yeah. Do these middlewares have a clearly defined like the interface to them? Uh, there are some proposals uh, in the so in this in repo, in I mean we left it halfway, but in this um, repo, which is a Go routing language, mm -hmm. the language that will exchange like all this, there's a, a proposal that I made for middlewares because I, I wanted to try if we could do like the index, like the client side for the index or with this when mm -hmm. I switch projects. Mm -hmm. So here are, uh, it's a proposal of how would uh, the um, middleware thing work, which mm -hmm. in the end is just like a chain of middlewares that keep like propagating uh, routing as a syntax expression until it's, it managed to fulfill everything. And if not, it, it receives the populated one the other way and so yeah open to discussion yeah, yeah, yeah so it's just a middleware that has the root which is how to process the expression and then some middleware context to propagate between the different the chain of of middlewares and then this is how the routing language uh, looks which in the end we have the predicate with tags which is the the function name and then we had key values elements, so so we can have positional or or name named arguments, and it's up to the middleware to to know how to process it and and take it back. So in that sense, total flexibility. And th so this is not working. And I know that Pitar has been working these days on like having all of the parsers and all of the all of the. So here's the spec. Here's the actual syntax, which translates into IPLD without ADL, ADLs in a dirty way. I would not do this like this now that I know a bit of IPLD and then the parser so that, that is, this is what the middlewares use in order to know like the routing expressions, uh, if this is a tag, what the, the routing expression is, is asking for. And, but the actual operational thing is smart records. Here are a few examples. And we build like a chat application that used so that used the smart record as a server to store information in smart record and like all the chatting. We can all the messages. We can try that. And also like 
there are a few examples with um, how the, um, the actual DHT, how would it be used with the DHT, in which like, for instance, we may store this private record, which is a PID and the multi-address, and we add additional, so we add a connectivity tag and available tag to check if the peer, the DHT peer where it end up, uh, where I end up storing the data has the connectivity to that peer or not. So when the when the DHT peer that needs to store this information receives the, the smart record, the first thing that it will do is execute the the this smart tag to check if it has connectivity and it will mutate the the smart record to say here. So it will mutate this this um, tag into dialed if it was able to dial or not, so that or not dial. So that when someone fetches that um, that smart record, you have additional information that is not only like the multi address, but also I this is my multi address and I was able to dial this guy or I'm not oh, connected right. to this guy. Exactly. So, so that's the kind of yeah. additional yeah. information. Oh, yeah, and that's the idea to add this logic so that it's independent of the protocol and this could yeah. like ask for this smart record and yeah. the logic would be the same. I have to say, I, I'm sorry to ask so many questions. No, no, please. Did, did they keep coming close to my like this design that so I just want to like understand things. So um, with the example of the swap run have, right? Obviously, you could change the protocol so that you know it actually instead of having this so-called one half request, you would have actual routing. Yes, yes. Right. Um, but that requires a change to the protocol, right? Yes. Which for an upgrade, all that. Could you you could if I'm reading your middlewares right, you could theoretically like write a local middleware to translate into a routing request yes. into like a regular bit swap one half yes. request and then like reinterpret the results back yes. in. So you could like use that as a compatibility thing to mm -hmm. is that some? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's useful yeah. to understand. Uh, the thing is that middlewares don't exist, and I know that even Pitar has. You should definitely chat with Pitar because he was tinkering on the BitSwap code, base code, uh -huh. to see how we could like embed mm -hmm. these these mm -hmm. routing expressions. Because like the idea we had is let's add additional features to BitSwap without having to resort to the DHC, or even like yeah. in addition to the DHC, so that when you get the smart record from the DHC, you are able to right. to do like. Maybe get the the full list of CIDs without having to to yeah. do the back and forth or something like that. Oh yeah, and there's some cool stuff you could do with that. It's like if you have the routing language of this off, you could like do queries other than just one. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Apart from that, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, finally, like we even in, like embedded this in IKFS. So there's a branch somewhere in Go IKFS where you can like ask for smart records for other peers that are running the smart record program. So in the end, what it does is just find the key. Um, is that embedded into the actual like vector fetching code? Like the, yes. The no, 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 no. Like this is uh, an, uh, like a, a parallel one. protocol that yeah, you could use yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. test okay, that we could have. You can run a separate yeah. command. And uh, yeah. it's somewhere over sense. here. Yeah, yeah it's old. But uh, like it gave you the, um, the a CLI. Um, yeah, I don't remember what was this, but like it gives you a CLI um, yeah. command so that you could ask for, like if the other IKFS node had smart records and yeah. we tested this to see how it worked. And that's it, I think. Two questions. The first one is what is the it depends on on the how you so let's put the example of of the DHT. And the DHT would be the same problem, like so, so what I'm hearing is using compatible routing doesn't affect the number of pops. The yes, that's it. That's why we wanted to decouple it from the transport because right now you only you can only fetch prior records with the DHC, but ideally you could use like the gossip of channel to fetch or even like direct uh, requests by HTTP to get the same provider record that you would have in the DHC. Second question: How how far is it? Can I, can I well, really far. So smart records are working. So you could like 
store and, and like create new smart tags and process them and send them and there's a limit to comparable message request that does that but you would have to do like the rest <laughs> which is uh figuring out middlewares probably like we have to i, I have to check the code because um Peter was working a bit more than me on that like after that i switched to this team but like he had parsers so that you can pass functions and like run the, the logic the right way so only the smart record part is fully yeah, and it doesn't impact the number of computer exchange. I'm saying no, it's just the, the wire format. That's it. And the computer, so the a wire format that we all understand, so that I can run logic that the other that I know that the other guy will understand. But the couple of the time, that's that's it. Can I ask another? Yes, question? you should. Yeah. So uh smart reference seems super duper cool, and I'm like really like that. I, I would love for this to become the thing that <laughs> um, uh, every time I start to go down the route, the, the, route of the route of like we should move like our future transport stack over smart records and get it ready. There's all there's you know frequently product folks who like want something in three months. And yeah. and like I'm wondering like what is like how much like because you know, like you mentioned the middlewares, it's all obviously like well, building, designing the middleware interface and then implementing a bunch of them. Um, although that one can happen over time, I guess. And then, like, you know, like getting moving over to the DHT and then, like, you know, which is a huge project on its own. And then, like, you know, like, and also, like, uh, you, don't, you don't need to go over the DHT. Like, you can do this. So, yeah, and actually, one cheap, because the, the, the point where we were before, like, when was the prioritized, was that we wanted to have a parallel protocol in the DHC, so no changes to the DHC, we just use the DHC to find who had the smart record. So we did a find peer, and uh, then we talked to, with an independent protocol. Uh, so it was a, a trick in order not to have to touch the DHC at all and to be compatible, but we could use smart record. It was a, an additional uh, RTT because we find with the, so you did a find peer, right now you do a find so that, peer. That allows some accessibility, but you can also, just as a local peer, when you see one of right. these yeah. fine things, you delegate that out well, to the, the DHT that's there is a five minutes. Or or even in the indexer, like if you use the routing language to implement vouchers so that other systems start following like that approach. Maybe the the, the well, previous because, systems don't work with that, but like I didn't really well like the middleware thing provides like this interesting symmetry on a client where like if you really wanted to like make like immediately yes. the client have a top level smart routing language, you just write a whole bunch of compatibility layers that are calling out to um, existing. Yeah, and which is interesting because like I'm like oh, that's a topic. Like, like, yeah. yeah, that was one of the ideas. And actually, another thing that is really cool is that uh, the spec is fully fleshed out because like Qatar yeah. invested a lot of time on having all the framework figured out and so on while I was yeah. implementing in parallel. All of this stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, everything is there, but it's not implemented. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing that would need to exist is a spec for the middleware, and I don't know if it's like accept PR on that or like that. I think it doesn't exist because, like, it exists. It exists the concept. Yeah. Not the. Let me check because. Like I mean, is it sufficiently like like is because you said yeah, so it's the language spec. Yeah. So it's fully fleshed out the, the language spec, but nothing. So the 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 only middleware spec is my proposal. Which yeah. End up not being discussed or yeah. merged. Well, I'm just saying because like if that existed, then if that were done, and I assume it will be hopefully at some point, then the path to implementation that avoids all complex, you know, uh, networking protocol changes is to just implement it all locally with like translation layers before it goes to the output of the protocol. Um, so I have one more question. Who is working on this? Because Qatar, last time I talked to him, was like, I'm an IPFS leader and I try to do no this one. Thing. Like, yeah. Guitar was doing it to his spare time some stuff, like exploring the, yeah. the um, integration with Bitswap and yeah. so on. And I did some of the middleware part when I joined yeah. data systems while I was ramping up. Um, that's, that was the last. And probably, like, there's a commit here from last month in the composable routing. 
then in the routing language, the last one is from last month. And in smart records, I think it's like from three months ago since I last talked to you. So um, will controversial suggestion uh, Should I start? We were, we were laying out all these independent tests that we need to write. Like, maybe we should propose this team take this on for a couple of months to like get this ready so that it can go into a data transfer stack in the future. I'd like to, we should define what the interface is that we want the web to go Well, I mean, what I'm hoping is that we can get to like the content routing portion of the stack. Its interface is it accepts the query in the form of this routing language. And then. Right. But yeah. so right now, that's this very abstract, like virtual machine dot click and get that. So, so we need to define what the actual concrete interface of what one of these records looks like in terms of a thing that is used. And probably we have some schema that can be known as that basis rather than the current abstract virtual machine set. So there, there's one level more concreteness that we need to scope this to something that's a little bit more mm -hmm. level in another level of concrete, which is we, we have like a specific set of things, like we want accessibility. And so okay. we can have the data format be able to be accessible, but we should do it such that the initial MVP actually we need to start from the other side. So rather than so like we've got this great framework. Right. But now I think the next thing to actually go to something uh that it gets us what we need for the current kind of routing thing is we say, great, we need like resolve of a host and we like there that's already partially there. Yeah. Um but but having that in a constrained way of what the initial grammar is rather than the abstract grammar is going to make this much more so one one challenge is a uh, concrete grammar. The grammar is but like the challenge is that this is a general framework in the sense that uh you have a general language you have uh only one Look for the code to... as, as it exists. Um because uh can I just say like are we talking about we need more specificity in the query part or in the result part? In the interfaces of how we actually interact with these in a way that is able to do things. Okay. Like I want to be, I want to have a type that is a, a content routing record, and I want to be able to make a query, and I want to get a result, and I want to be able to do something. Okay. Because I, like, I think like there's, right now there's I have, already a right now I have a VM, and I say things like get the find predicates out of this VM object that then churns for a while and yes. gives me some abstract thing. So there's no logic of how to process all the data. This is the wire. So you have a way of sending standard information through the wire. But there's no logic here or here that knows how to process that. There are examples. So the results you don't have a process. And so you don't you don't have the logic in both sides. We don't have any of the helpers. And so we need what our imagined interface is on I would like to make a query for SID. Right. And yes. And, and this translates that. to find CID with these three attributes. That's not there. So we have the, the interface, we have the language, but how but you orchestrate it? If I said there was a routing API, it would be like share. Yes. And, you, and that, but is that not at all applied? No, no. No, there's there's a language that where you could like have with all of the predicates that you need to do this kind of stuff with some examples. Yeah. But you don't have like the the if I send a find, you fetch the find, like you get out the predicate to know what you're looking for. Get the CID to know that you're looking for this CID, process whatever you want so that I orchestrate a new language. So that there's only a language and a framework. And some some ideas in paper of how would this work. Okay. But there's no implementation. So the only implementation is the persistent layer, which is smart records and the routing language, which is a standard way of like sending data through the wire. Uh, so like when you saw those like route like CID. That's just purely abstract. That's purely abstract. abstract. So, anyway. no. So, the only thing, like, go to the repo and you will see it, like, okay. right away. No, no, no problem, no problem. But, like, that, that, that's the challenge. So, that's right? another thing. Yes, that's the challenge that you need to. So, you only have the, the, the not even the frame of the language. The language, and, and in the smart records, you have a way of, like, storing data and, like, Actual logic and P2P protocol, but just like the message request that said put uh, yeah. record, receive record, and that's it. Okay. All right. Cool. Sounds good. So then that means somebody yeah. else's question. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>
Bye-bye.